Wait, is that copyrighted? Can I can I hum that you know theme before we start? Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm doing a legal light cast tonight for Division Two and Season Two, so I believe this is a top eight matchup. We've got Alex Jellyfish Guy going up against uh, Willow eighty one. Don't know what his full name is. But Alex is going to go ahead and start us off. Pitch up. Man, we used to have Star Civil and Chaos in our opening hand. That's got to be good. I do know their deck list ahead of time. And hey, there's a Lugay. Sephiroth for Lugay. Nice. So Alex is uh, going against his namesake and starting off with a bunch of backups. I believe Alex is doing like quote unquote mono dark Necron uh, type of deck. Whereas I believe his opponent is doing Ice Lightning Alcid, if I'm not mistaken. Where's my Hold on. Got to get my little ninja guy. This little awesome guy here. And, uh-oh, that's weird. Oh, he, like, played a sail onto his opponent's side of the field. That was kind of strange. I wonder why it did that. Hmm. All right, well, no big deal. But, yeah, so we'll play uh, uh, E-Sail. I'm guessing we're going to get Al Sid. Maybe we'll get a Zero Miss. I'm not sure what other Ice Fords we want. Maybe if there's a Ford that churches us out of backup. But Al Sid, yep, go for the go for the starter. What do we pitch? Oh, and he's running Titania in here. Very interesting. Titania and Aglacia. Discards Alua. Do we have a lightning backup to put down for that? No? Are we going all in? Oh, man, we are. It's kind of weird it keeps playing it to his opponent's side of the field. That's a bit strange. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, normally I'm not a big fan of the turn one Alcid play because like all those freeze triggers just didn't do anything right. However, playing Sid Randell for free is pretty nice because now we've just shut off anything our opponent does. I don't have Alex's deck list in front of me. I mean, surely he's got Shantoto in here. So I would imagine that's like his cleanest out to this, but otherwise, yeah, excuse me. I'm not sure exactly what he, how badly this will or won't hurt him. Yeah, I'll send it into Sid Randall. That actually feels pretty nice. I do like that. It doesn't look like we probably had a lightning backup in hand anyway. Hey, choose a Ford Punk Trolls, break it. Well, <laughs> Sid Randall isn't going to last long after all. Man, it's such a, this is such an unfortunate, I don't know. I don't know this card because it's just like, again, he's so good against certain stuff. And he's just worthless in other situations. And it's just completely dependent on what your opponent has when they've got something like that. All right, we're going to go to combat. Alcid's going to go ahead and put in... Uh, oh, look at that. It's another dark card, Veritas. That actually would have been a pretty nice one to drop there. Clean exit to that Alcid. Unfortunately, we are having a few Octagon issues. Uh, the They ran into a bug where either Alex or Will... Like, they weren't able to get the game to create and then actually play it. So I'm actually hosting this game right now. But because of that... I think that's why every time Willow plays a card, it keeps like throwing it to his opponent's side of the field. Yeah, it's kind of strange, but regardless, we'll see if we can either can't get that fixed or that's just something I'll have to play around. And then the good old octagon, no shuffling occurs too. Yeah, anytime you do a search for a sale, you gotta make sure, or, or search for any card, make sure you shuffle multiple times because octagon will just stack all your cards together otherwise. Ooh, and we're just going to use uh, Gestalian Emperor Gestal's ability right away. Go ahead and basically swap him out for Camelot. Camelot's going to go search us another dark card. I wonder who we're going to get. We already got Chaos. We just lost Veritas. I don't know how many copies he runs of each one. We could always get Neo X Death and just uh, really go goofy on our opponent here. All right, we did opt to get Neo X Death. I have to admit, I'm kind of surprised he didn't just slam it down there off those two backups. I thought for sure he might. All right, this is Alcid. We'll get one more dole in on this guy. And there goes another dark god. So many dark cards. And then presumably Camelot's going to... I don't know. I don't know if he'll choose Ice or Lightning. I mean, he gets protected from both from Alcid himself. So Ice is probably the better answer. Now, the real thing I'm worried about for Willow here is if this Neo X death comes down, I don't really know how he deals with that card. He's either just going to have to outrace it or... All right, we attacked with Camelot, hidden Alcid into our opponent's damage zone. And now we are dropping for Stale. Interesting. So we're only going to hit another for Stale off of it. We're going to whiff 
Akusith, Aluge, Gentiana, Zalir. I wonder whether Stale's in here. I mean, it does seem like there are quite a few high cost cards. Veritas, Neomex, Death, Camelot. I have to admit, I'm very surprised he hasn't dropped this Neo X death. Now, he does have his opponent's list, so maybe there is something in there that is dangerous. Maybe he has Shinryu in there, and that would be pretty, pretty easy counter. So perhaps that's what he's worried about. But, but beyond that, again, generally, I slightly just have a way to deal with that card. We're going to discard an X death and a Bahamut Zero to play Aldo. Going to get Zeromus. I suppose this makes sense in that Zeromus can come into play right now. Um, although Zeromus presumably won't be able to target Camelot unless he didn't change it off of Dark, but with no Necron, I don't know why he wouldn't have done that. Um, but man, like, I don't know, I, I kind of hate to throw away that X-Death. That X-Death is such a clean answer to the Neo. Well, no, it won't break. Yes, it will. It'll break the Neo X-Death. There's that Necron. <laughs> That's what we wanted for all these Dark plans. It would break the Neo X-Death, and it's just such a great backup, too. But maybe he's got another in hand. Maybe he doesn't care. I just always hate to see that card thrown away. Hey, it's Electric Jellyfish, but the wrong guy's using it. Presumably this is going to be... Oh, no, it's Glassy Labolus. Okay. So probably 7k to Verstale. Unless he was made Lightning. Which, okay, I guess he must have been. Or again, he left him Dark. But looks like we're going to freeze the... So maybe we'll do freeze and 7k? Or is he going to make him discard? Looks like he made him discard instead. I guess he doesn't care about the verse stale. He's like, yeah, you can hit me with that all you want. All right, we'll attack with our verse stale. Hit a Renault into damage. Dull two. Is this a Neo X death? Yeah, here he comes. Do 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 do. See, man, if we had that. Oh, and he's gonna use Luge on it too. Give it two K and brave. I hope we got another X death in hand because if not, he is going to be kicking himself right now for pitching that X death. And we've got some good targets. Alua, the Sephiroth, Sidrandel is not a bad one, or does it have to be a lightning? Yeah, it's I, I can for some reason I never remember what the exact specifications on this card is. Uh Titania is a really nice one. Could have frozen both of his backups. That's kind of funny, he just tucked the Luge under the Neo X death. Do we have it? I, that'd be very appropriate if X Death took out Neo X Death. Said Randell. Oh, yeah, here we, we did have another one. Here it comes. <laughs> oh, man, the Octagon had <laughs> moved X Death and Isail over to his opponent's side of the field. That's kind of funny. Okay, so X Death, we're going to instantly answer that Neo. We will have to sack off one of our one of our characters. Probably going to get rid of. I, I feel like you'd get rid of Aldo here. You don't want to lose your Lightning CP, or you don't want to lose your Ice CP. The X Death will now be your Lightning CP for you. And then as far as who you put in, uh, I would put in... Titania would really hold the board down. You could either just completely lock him out with the Chaos. Yeah, I like that. You could have done the Zero Miss too. The Zero Miss... Actually, I wonder if the Zero Miss is better here. I think I actually would go with the Zero Miss because the Titania, yeah, can freeze too, but the Zero Miss basically would have done that as well. Because Zero Miss would have triggered Al Cid, which means... Which, I mean, this should trigger Al Cid as well. So I guess it's, yeah, you're freezing the whole board, regard, but I feel like Zero Miss also then has that pressure of, hey, you got to dull your forwards every turn, and he's going to have the on attack. So I, I think I would have gone with Zero Miss there, but it's fine. I mean, the whole board gets frozen, so. Same thing occurs. And presumably we'll go in for damage four with the Al Cid. Nice. So he did have the extra X death. All right, we feel a little better about throwing that away. Oh, <laughs> there's a Shantoto. Not that he could have cast it, but... Jellyfish certainly would have liked to have had that anyway. Man, he's 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 going to be on a pickle of a turn here. He's only going to have three in hand. There might be some dark cards in hand. He has no resources. So if, if it's any weird color stuff, he's completely color locked right now. Yeah, and see that Zero Mist could have kept the chaos down too. And then Zero Mist's extra effect would have automatically kept the forwards down. So yeah, we, we should have gone Zero Mist, but it's okay. We did at least freeze everything for the turn. And Jellyfish is just going to pass. Nothing he can do about it. Which means it's back to Alex. Which means if he's got any form of haste here. He, he probably can just win this on the spot. Nope. No haste. That's okay. Vane. 
I wonder what we made that Camelot. And there's another Neo X death. My goodness. And he's not even gonna cast anything. He's basically say, "All right, what are you gonna do? We enter the or no? Are we?" Okay, it says went to end phase. There's Sephiroth. Nice. So Sephiroth is going to freeze one of the. Uh, we're gonna get a double freeze again for the Alcid. So we're gonna freeze both forwards. And he's going to have to discard. That's going to put him back down to two in hand. Oh, man. Willow is just in complete control here. I wonder what he... Okay, I wonder if he did make Camelot ice finally on that last turn. Because, yeah, I mean, that, that, was, just, that was just holding us back this whole time. So the good news is... Well, actually, there isn't good news. Because even if he makes Camelot ice... No, I don't think it matters. Cannot be chosen by summoner abilities that share its element. So if it's ice... But that's technically an ice forward that is creating it. Even if it's the whole lightning aspect, so... As long as he's ice, he is safe from dual element ice lightning cards from dulling him. However, he would not be safe from a lightning card dulling him. When a lightning forward, you control attacks. See, but it's still coming from Al Cid, right? And he is an ice forward, so. So uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh, well, there's Charlotte. She just shuts that down anyway. But I think I think you actually can't choose the Camelot, period. Because it's still coming from Al Cid, who is an ice forward. Which, of course, now it doesn't matter anyway, because it's all going to have to go to Charlotte, but... I mean, he's on six damage, right? Like, I think you can just brute force your way through this. Well, no, not yet. You you can... Hmm. You could party attack with the Sephiroth. You're still a little short. You would still... We need something else. Although the Charlotte will dull... So actually, yeah, you can brute force. Yeah, you you party attack Sephiroth to Tanya. You double dull the Charlotte. He's forced to block with Camelot unless he's got a trick in hand. And then the Alsa just wins it. See, so yeah, unless he's got what like Hecaton Kyre. Belias, those are, the only, those are the only two cards I can think of that get you out of this with two in hand. I don't know if he's even running either of them. Titan doesn't help. Yep. <laughs> He's like, we're not even going to worry about that. All right, Willow takes game one with Ice Lightning, beating that dark deck in the face. We're going to see how game two goes in just a moment. All right, and we are back with game two this time. Alex Jellyfish is going to start us off, and he says, let me see that hand. Oh, I think we're about to lose that El Cid, folks. We can't target the Jill in the bot, of course, but yep, there goes El Cid. Removed from game. That was unfortunate, because that was a pretty solid hand. He was probably willing to just go El Cid into the White Tiger, but uh, he's going to have to draw another one for that to happen. So, great start there from Jellyfish. He does have the Jill in the bot, so if nothing else, he can just drop that back up. But we'll see what he draws into. If he draws into another El Cid, then it doesn't matter. Now he's going to pitch the Jill. Oh, okay, he drew another Jill in the bot. Pitch Jill for Jill. What's her special called? Sadistic Surge. It's a fun special. You know, funny, I was watching a video on Final Fantasy 13 earlier. It's been a long time since I played that game. I don't think I've touched it since it came out in 2010. But in the video, the guy mentioned <laughs> that Jill in the bot was, uh, she's just constantly adjusting her glasses. Like in so many scenes, she'll just like take her glasses off like, huh? Huh? And like, <laughs> I, again, I didn't really remember that about the character. So uh, I was presumably I'll go back and play it one day. I'll have to uh, look at that because I don't remember that at all. Love this backup, though. Fun, solid Opus 1 backup. All right, we're going to pitch forward Tilika and back up Lugay to put down Star Sibyl. Went and fetched ourselves an Eshnatarl. We are definitely looking to cheat in some forwards. I, I kind of wish he hadn't thrown out the Lugay. I mean, if you're planning to play Eshnatarl next turn, you can just do it off of two backups. But I don't know. I always hate to see a, a good backup. Good old Lugay. I hate to see him go. It's funny we're playing this forward till like I mean it makes sense with all the dark forwards we're playing. 
we can actually produce CP off them. Here comes Hurdy. We're going to reveal a character. Hey, it's Sid Randell. We'll go ahead and add him back to our hand. I wonder how much we're going to value that card this time if we're going to try to play it again. Knowing our opponent has things like Emperor Geshtal, but again, I don't know what else he has, so... And we're going to slam it down right now. Say, all right, you got another Geshtal? Go ahead and play it. We pitched, uh, looks like, Glacia and Renoa for that. Yep. Pitched the White Tiger for the Herdy. All we're missing over here is some Lightning CP. And we're ready to start going off. People ask me about this White Tiger in my build, and, like, he's great off the Al Cid, no doubt. It it kind of sucks you can't cast him normally. Although, again, at his worst, he's still ICP, so he never really color locks you, which I kind of like. Uh, I've been on a kick lately. I don't know if it's just, if this will be, like, my new direction for playing, or this is just a phase. But in general, I've just really appreciated more consistent cards. And what I mean by consistent is, again, let's say, let's say you know, you're on the back foot. Game's not going well. You're in top deck mode, so legit, it's you've got to draw a good card to stay alive. And if you draw this white tiger listing Nimbus, and you don't have Al Cid ready to play, not on the field, you have to be able to play him, you've just drawn a dead card. This card can't actually do anything. So I, I have become more and more wary of cards that I can't naturally hard cast in decks. And, you know, maybe that's just a me thing. And, uh, you know, the, the value is clearly there. Al Cid into Tiger is awesome. And then Tiger is such a great forward. But for me personally, again, I've, I've become more and more wary of, oh, you know, because I've, I've testing these decks and my do my deck techs. I've tested them out. And then I go, I'll have those situations. Okay, I need something good here. And, oh, cool, I, I legit drew a card. I can't do anything with it. So maybe that's just me. We did put out the Eshnatarl. Uh, no entry effect. Now, here's the thing. The Sid will kind of stop whatever this cheats in. So even if he cheats in Camelot, uh, cheating in, like, Neo X-Death would be pretty good because that doesn't have an entry, so that doesn't care about that. But, like, the 7 CP Sephiroth isn't going to matter. And he's swinging with the Sid. Interesting. I, have imag I imagine Alex is just going to take this. Because I don't think he's foolish enough to just swing and let his forward die. But maybe not. Maybe he wants to see what, what kind of trick he's got. And he's going to try to bait it out. He did. Yeah, he just said, okay, well, if you got something, go ahead. Maybe realizing, too, that, again, as long as the Sid's on the field, the Eshnatarl's not as effective anyway. What does he run in here? Does he have anything with small ping damage? Oh, he has the Sephiroth. Yep, there goes Sephiroth. And then we'll just go ahead and zap it for another four. Nice. That's actually the first time I've seen someone use the lightning effect of that Sephiroth. I'm used to... Very nice. Only shame part is we still need a lightning backup because it always feels bad to have to pitch a lightning card from hand to do that. And as we pass back to Alex, we actually discarded a Zero Mist to put down Gentiana. Not 100% sure I like that. Zero Miss is such a good card, and again, there's not really any recursion in these Ice Lightning decks, other than basically the X Death. So, I, I don't know, and like the Gentiana is only going to stop Dull, so I guess I, I'm just not really sure what this forward is, is going to accomplish. Yeah, because like, doesn't stop Camelot. I mean, you can Dull it on your turn and get in a point of damage, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I don't. But, I don't know, maybe he had nothing else in hand, I'm not sure. We actually cheated in the Camelot with Star Sybil, lost our Earth CP, but we're going to get Chaos. Now we can just color fix for whatever we want. We'll go ahead and plop that Chaos down. And then probably stop there. Again, he, he's only going to hit you for one point of damage next turn. Unless, again, he drops an Al Cid, I suppose. But. Because he's either going to have to party attack or use the Gentiana to dull. Oh boy. It's the man himself. We threw out another e sale to get out Mr. Stern Leonis. We've got one, two, three, four forwards we can remove to do a Stern trigger. Oh, we are. We're just going to do it right now. Okay. I guess we're going to go 4K Brave. Because the 7K doesn't really do anything.
I'm assuming he hit a wrong button. I'm assuming he didn't mean to remove four and then go to end phase. And there's a Neo X death. Probably wouldn't be terrible to have right now. We know he doesn't have his own X death. To stop him. That was very thematic last game. Neo or X death coming in, taking out Neo X death. I mean, really, it should be the reverse. But hey, there's a Star Sybil. Probably going to go grab Shantoto here. And just destroy our opponent. Yeah, yeah, there it is. I don't know. I don't like this stern, like... You have a sail in hand. So now, okay, your board's about to get wiped, and you're going to have two backups and one in hand. Where if you had done two and pitched, I guess it would have had to have been the other card in your hand because the stern was the dark card. Unless you somehow had, like, two stern. Play the sail, and then you can go search out your Alcid, search out your Zero Miss. He's probably not going to Shantoto a board of just two forwards. And, and again, like the stern, it's, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like it, it would have been better to wait to just dump those four. Just, I mean, yeah, you got two points of damage. But, you know, I mean, granted, you didn't know. If he doesn't hit Star Sybil, then maybe this looks a lot better, obviously. I can all, but, but, you know, he did hit Star Sybil, so. Now it's Shantoto time. Now, the good news is, yeah, the Gentiana can dull the Camel Knot, so it won't be able to attack, which is nice. So he won't get in that... Uh, I mean, granted, he wouldn't have let him get him that point of damage anyway. I'm sure he would have blocked the stern, knowing that Shantoto's there. Granted, this won't be cheap for Alex, because he's only doing it off of essentially one backup. So we'll have to discard his own Gentiana, a Renoa, an Emperor, Shantoto. Everything gets removed. Oh, it's a backup Emperor, too. That's a fun card. I like that one. But the board has been reset. He now has, he's still color fixed. Willow here is only going to have three in hand. He really needs a lightning backup. See, and the thing is too, he also now needs a lightning card in hand. So he needs both a lightning backup and a lightning card. There's Herdy. He, he was really quick to throw that out. And now he's like, well, hold on, hold on. I got to think about this. East sale. Oh, there's another East sale. Okay. That's good. So the question is, which four do you want to get? Uh, I know, okay, so one else has been removed already, right? I believe that was due to the Kate Sith. Yep, we lost two Sephiroth. Yeah, you definitely want to get the El Cid. Alex could potentially drop a seven CP Sephiroth here to dump it out of your hand, which would be unfortunate, but barring that, that should help us get set up for the next uh, next play. Ooh, we're going to Dolce and Toto play Spiritus. Very nice. So which uh, dark card? Presumably we're paying one, two, three, four, five, six. This is going to be Neo X death. We're just going to go fetch Neo. This is a good place to use him because, um, like, again, unless he gets X death, I don't see what else he has to answer this card. So I think this is a good time to play him. Man, these Spiritus Materia cards, I actually pulled one from my local pack the other night. Got another Materia, and I just felt so like, eh, because it was like, oh yeah, these are Legends. Because they don't feel like Legends, like I get they're the light and dark cards, but I wonder, I mean, I don't know, they're just kind of weird cards anyway, being such small bodies, and, you know, clearly they were meant to, oh, you feed into this dark theme, you feed into this light theme, but the fact that they themselves don't see that effect, like if they themselves saw that effect... I think maybe they'd be a little better, but they're so weak, it's like, okay, he's only going to get his effect if Neo X Death dies first, whereas anyone can just, boop, bop off the Spiritus really easily. And then the other thing is, too, is that they purposely didn't include the whole text of, you can play him onto the field if you already have dark characters, so unless he's out first, you actually can't play the card, so I don't know. They're just kind of weird. Just uh, kind of awkward cards. However, what is not awkward is Jellyfish in this game state because Willow needs in hand base and it's going to cost him his whole hand to do it even if he has it but he needs X death and a lightning card there's El Cid for lightning what else did he pitch 
Sid Randell. Bahamut Zero. Oh, baby. Terra Flare. Just gonna send Neo X Death into oblivion. And the Spiritus effect won't matter because he doesn't have any forwards, so. Man. So this, that, that's tough. Like, you pitched your Al Cid for that. So you only have one Al Cid left in the deck. At the same time, if you don't do that, you're going to lose a backup at the end, right? So you might as well at least kill it. And the other X Death is already in damage, so. Hopefully that's the end of that, yeah. No, not a not a great play to make, but uh, you, you have to do that. You can't just start losing backups. All right, we'll take one damage. It's a Lua. A little Spiritus going in there and just whap, whacking him, whacking him with his his big sword. I guess that's a sword. Almost looks more like a big uh, like a big uh, pizza pizza scoop. Pizza scoop? Wait, why can't I say that word? Like a big pizza spatula you would use to like fish a pizza out of an oven. Oh, and here's our own Sid Randell. Yikes. So even if we had ever dreams of getting our Al Sid combo off, it uh, is not going to happen anytime soon. Granted, with one removed, one already in the break zone, no lightning CP. I mean, Will, I, I don't know. I don't know how Willow comes back in this game. Like, he did a good job getting rid of the Neo X death, but... And he's not going to get any of his entry effects currently. Another stern Leonis, I suppose. But not when you've just got to, yeah, draw a pass like that. That doesn't feel good. So if, if Jellyfish just wants to put this game out of reach right now, if he's got 7 CP Sephiroth, you just drop it here. And just say, okay, cool. You just can't play anymore. I'm not going to let you even get your hand back. Haven't gotten to see the Necron yet. I've been waiting for that. <laughs> this Necron... It's such a neat card idea. Like, this is, again, what passive damage should have been. And then, of course, one opus later, they said, well, okay, so what if, like, you didn't have to try it all, though? And then it even draws you a card when you do it, so there's no downside whatsoever. Oh, Sophie. I, 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 I pray that that card doesn't exist in uh, standard format one day. I'm sure I'm not the only one. But, nonetheless, man, we would have enough for Necron if we drew him right now, right? three more dark characters yep but first we've got to put in our damage there's a gentiana like i said octagon's being a little screwy so it's actually throwing it into our opponent's damage but i say we did take that gentiana over here He didn't attack with Sid Randell. Interesting. I guess he doesn't want to put him to damage three. I mean, I love the Charlotte coming down, but like, I don't, what's the, I mean, what's he gonna do? Yeah, the only thing he could even do is Zero Miss with haste, but Zero Miss won't get the entry freeze. So it'll attack what it wants and freeze one of your backups. Like, I don't know. I guess I would. I don't think I'm, I'm that worried about that. The yeah, Alcid doesn't work here. Yeah, you could turn on his own Charlotte, but I, got, I don't really see that being an issue, so I don't know. I think I would have happily gone in with Sid Randell. I mean, sometimes it makes sense. You know, if you're facing monks, <laughs> yeah, you can't put him to the dreaded damage one because that Yang's just going to come down. So, so I do understand sometimes playing around a damage threshold. I just don't think in this particular instance with this board state that you have to worry about him hitting damage three. Again, especially with no lightning CP back here, a zero miss is going to cost him. So he's got a dull hurdy. He has to throw out another lightning card. And every time he throws out a lightning card, that's just that much less he has to use for an eventual lightning backup. Bring down the zero miss. That's going to put him to three in hand. He won't even get the entry freeze. Yeah, it could attack right away, but... Is this X-Death? There he is. Although, I was going to say we're going to take, but no, it's got to target the Charlotte. I 
And then who do we bring back? Yeah, I guess our own Sid Randells. Either that or Lua would be the other option. It's unfortunate we can't do Al Sid, but again, our opponent. Okay, so now no one, <laughs> nobody has entry effects anymore. Only for backups. Neither player allowed to have on entry effects. A Emperor Gestal backup would be pretty brutal here from Jellyfish, and I think would just basically put this game out of reach. Oh my gosh, does he have it? There's a Tyro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was kind of waiting for that. Ask and he shall receive. Okay. Yeah, I don't see how this game's going to come back. I mean, great. You know, you never say never. Seeing weirder thing, And he does have that lightning CP. But with his opponent having a Sid Randell down, I mean, if it, if it swings, maybe that was what he was worried about. Maybe it wasn't putting him to damage stream. Maybe he was worried about, like, Glacial Labellus. Because maybe he realizes as long as I've got this Sid Randell down, he can't actually do anything to me. So as long as I keep it active, he can't hit it with a glassy Labellus. So yeah, that see, I, I'm guessing that's Alex's thinking here. Wow, a uh, great amount of patience from him. He's, he's definitely piloting this deck more differently than than he uh, than he normally does his he's usually so aggro of a player so a lot of patience here from him it'll of course now it does give your opponent this many more turns to get back into the game but it is also smartly choking them out because again saying you can't get me with your glacia so and beyond that what does he have sephiroth doesn't work here <laughs> is he going to spend bahamut zero on just sid randall eh that doesn't seem worth it Interesting. Well, he says, okay, no entry effects here. Let's, uh, how about an end of turn effect? Put out Vein, which is also a big enough body he can't actually attack into it. Now, the good news is he's got four backups, so he can honestly just pay for Zane's. Zane. <laughs> Zane! The Zany guy! He can pay for Vein's trigger regardless. Oh, oh, man. He says, no. How about I just uh, destroy it instead? Okay. Gosh. Jellyfish has just had the answer for everything Willow's done. He's like, okay. Try to climb back in with the X-Death. All uh, right. Try to climb back in with the Vein. Just instant Raritas. Off of Emperor Gestal. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Had to do a short rewind. Uh, I caught there. Luckily, I was like, wait a minute. Something seemed odd about that. Gestal can't actually play Veritas. It plays five or less. So I had him rewind just a little bit. And what he's going to do is play Omega. Okay, so what he did was he broke the Gestalt to play Omega. Then he dulled three, pitched F, and he just played another Gestalt. Okay, so so it, it same thing in that we do lose the vein, but I just want to make sure we're doing it correctly. So Omega will come out off the original Gestalt, dull three, uh, discard a Sephiroth to play the second Emperor Gestalt. Which still gets us where we want to go. Breaks our opponents forwards. And even though his, his number counter says five, yeah, he just adjusted it. All right, glad we caught that error. Okay, so, but nonetheless, still in a pretty commanding position. Now we have Omega... Which, this, I mean, this is going to be lethal on the next turn unless we can do something about this. We've only got three in hand. X-Death is maybe our cleanest, but even like X-Death doesn't even have extra lightning to do here. There's zero miss, so we won't get our entry freeze. And he can't really afford to attack either because Omega is just going to block him. The good news is the zero miss does prevent... Oh, interesting. There's Electric Jellyfish. So we'll give Zero Miss Haste, which he already has. And then we can break the Jellyfish. We could dull the Omega. Yeah. So I guess we're basically going to have to go in and freeze. Now, this is still going to let us let our opponent take us up to... I mean, we still die here, though, right? Because the Omega is going to hit us for a point... 
and he hit Gusith, of course, just just uh, rub salt in the wounds. But I mean, we were dead anyway. We have nothing left in hand. Omega's going to hit us for one at the end of this turn. As long as he's got two forwards to attack, he's going to he's going to go to seven. So probably, I think it's more he just realized. Yeah, I think he just realized he was toast, and he just wanted to get in as much damage as he could, which, you know, if damage matters for tiebreakers, I don't know if it does at this point, since this is top eight. I don't think damage matters. However, it's still never a bad mindset to have, you know, especially for those Swiss rounds where damage does matter, that, hey, I got to get as much as I can. So that's going to wrap up game two. I don't think... Well, hold on. Maybe they'll play it, because maybe there's a burst that'll save him. Look at me jumping the gun. So who do we add back off the Eidolus? Said Randall. I mean, is there a burst that dulls anything in here? I haven't seen it yet. But, yeah. Yep, Titania. There you go. And then Sid will finish this off. So game two goes to Jellyfish. Dark uh, prevails this time. So we're going to a game three, folks. Let us see who takes this one. See you in just a moment. All right, folks, game three is starting off hot. Looks like Willow went first, and he said no more backups. Man, he threw out Grammys and Jill Nabot for Al Cid and White Tiger. Ooh, and then Alex is countering with Chaos and Luge. Ah, uh, I don't like this. I mean, uh, okay, so, so here's the thing. Now it's going to pay up, but for that first, like, none of those characters did anything. Like, why not wait a turn to do that? Why not get down the Jill and the Grammys or just one of them? I don't know. So maybe he was paranoid about the Kate Sith because last round the Kate Sith came down and he's like, I don't want to lose the El Cid again to the Kate Sith, which of course would have required Jelly to have it in hand, which he obviously didn't. But so now it didn't do anything about the first turn, but I will say it does set up nicely for this turn that now he's going to keep his color fixer down. He already put him on two damage. It, this does create a pretty quick clock for for uh, Jellyfish to have to answer. So this, this uh, again, it always sucks for that first turn. It was like, oh, that did nothing. But it does put a threat that, hey, well, now you've got to answer this. So ooh, I'm kind of surprised we threw out that Star Sybil. Because I feel like Shantoto is one of your outs here. Oh, well, you draw another one, so I guess it doesn't matter. New X step. There's that Necron Star Sybil. Still haven't gotten to see that Necron yet. Although, yeah, I don't know. I wonder if, so like you didn't have any, I wonder if he didn't have any other Earth CP. He might've been locked out. Because if he did, I feel like you absolutely just play the Star Sybil. You've got three backups now. Yeah, he's going to freeze the Chaos again probably, but you're still ready to Shantoto on your next turn. Because like this Verstale doesn't do anything. The Alcid's just going to push it out of the way. The Tiger's still going to freeze his backup. This is the kind of aggro people always hate playing against with Alcid, because Alcid into Tiger is disgusting. Oh, very interesting. He says, okay, you want to play aggro? Let's play aggro. He gets rid of the Star Sybil, the Necron, and Sid Randell, and puts out Neo X Death. Okay, now this is, that was a great choice. Because unless he can drop his own X death on it right now, he doesn't want to choose it with either of his forwards. They can't get over it without party attacking. I mean, you went all in on these two. I wonder if it's time to ride or die. So what you do is you... Part oh, no. He's not party attacking? Or is he party attacking? No, intro. Okay, so maybe he was just threatening the Sephiroth. But now. Do you attack with the tiger, too? And if he attacks with the tiger. So you'll probably freeze the chaos. Yeah, he is going to do it. Do you block this with Neo Exit? I almost. I wonder if you do, because now he can just put down any backup, sack it. And you can't really counter swing with Neo X death because these two are now just going to run over you. So I think what you, what I would have done there. Do 
we pitch uh, jellyfish in any sale? So we'll probably, we want to avoid choosing the Neo, so we're just going to double freeze for stale, make our opponent discard that last card in hand, and then we're just going to sack the Sephiroth off. So knowing that was coming down anyway, if you had blocked with the Neo X death, your opponent loses the Tiger, then the Sephiroth comes down, and they lose the Sephiroth as well, which they were always going to do. Yes, you would have lost Neo X death, but now your opponent would legit have a single forward on the field with no backups. And Jellyfish is just going to pass right back, because now he can just do that same turn again. You can't take another two damage. Like I mean, you can, but... Because, honestly, if he even just puts down uh, anything he wants to sack, oh, he can just attack that idiot through the Neo X death. So he's going to do the same thing again. So the question is, does he have another Sephiroth in hand? He might. I, I think you have to block that El Cid. If you block that El Cid, he cannot choose you with the Tiger because it'll just die before it even finishes the attack. So he'd lose the El Cid. He, if he swings with the tiger, you block that too. Okay, now he finally will block it. So we're probably going to do another Sephiroth here. Oh, it's Stern Leonis. Interesting. He doesn't actually have enough forwards to use his effect. Effect. Okay, huh, but he's basically threatening hey if I do get more forwards in there But now he's gonna have to sack something off for the Neo X death Probably El Cid El Cid's kind of done his job Okay, now this Neo X death is kind of punishing him Hmm. <laughs> well, uh, you know what though? He does have enough for Stern now Losing the Alcid means he does have enough stern triggers. Although he'd have to use the 4K Brave. He can't target it for the 7K. But he is also finally down to two in hand. He has no... So unless he can just keep putting out... I mean, so really, so Alex, so Jellyfish's plan right now is he needs to survive because Willow has put himself on a clock with that early aggression that now he's about to run out of resources. He can stern once, so on the next turn he can go stern 4K Brave one time. But beyond that, he's got to keep feeding into this engine. So an Alua here would actually be kind of gross because you could just go Alua 4K Brave. Alua can now trade against Neo X Death. Yep, we'll attack with Stern. You either let yourself go to six or. I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know how much the Verstale is doing for you at this point. And now your opponent's either got to play something out to immediately lose it. <laughs> the Dark Battles. Neo X Death versus Stern Leonis. I wonder if he's wishing he'd given the Neo X Death Lugate. No? Okay, that's it. He's out. He didn't have anything else to put down. Okay, well, Neo X Death is right. Uh, he's done what he needs to do. Your opponent's board is clear. So Jellyfish did what he needed to do. There he survived. So now build up. Sid Randell would be good here. Prevent your opponents. Willow, Willow may come to regret that aggressive opening of, of Sid and the White Tiger. And again, my whole thing is, I get Sid into White Tiger is a great play. And if you're going second, it's fine because you can immediately freeze whatever backup they put out. But there's just... Yeah, I mean... <laughs> 
it just didn't it just didn't have any immediate impact like it, it pushed really hard for two turns but spiritus will come out we'll go ahead and discard vein and gentiana are we looking for Kada or not kadaj camelot i was like it begins with a k because we dulled the chaos so probably get camelot which will get us another dark card we're just we're just playing dark cards the board <laughs> dark cards the board right now Oh no, Omega! Oh, good choice. I like that too. You've already got the chaos. What's the point of searching Camelot? And yeah, now Omega says, "Okay, you want to play with clocks? Let's put you on a clock." And he's gonna give him the Luge buff. Oh boy, this this could just be the game right here. X Death isn't gonna work against the Omega. It'll work against the Neo X Death, but then he'll lose the very X Death he's gonna play. There's always Bahamut Zero. Uh, I actually would have attacked with Neo X Death there. He's not going to glass yet. It prevents it actually from getting hit by Bahamut Zero, which is nice. I don't think there was a reason to not attack with Neo X Death. There's no, there's no way he's... um. There's no way he's going to, what, put out... He would not only have to put out two hasters, he would have to put out enough removal to get over Spiritus and Omega, and Omega has protection, so. Because if you hit him now, he'd go to one, then Omega would put him to two, and then you'd look at three, four, five, and Omega could hit him to six on that next turn. Which, I mean, I guess you're going to put him to five regardless, but. All right. <laughs> it's finally time to play backups. We threw out two backups turn one. Ugh, made my heart hurt. The mid-range in me was like, no, yeah, you need those to generate CP. What are you doing? But these aggro players are like, no, no, I won't do it. <laughs> it's like in Lord of the Rings when uh, Lord Elrond is telling his Sealdor, it's Sealdor, throw it into the fire. You know, he's trying to get him to throw the ring away. And that's all, it's like me. I'm like, Willow, play the backup. Put it down. And he just looks at it. He looks at me. No. And he throws the backup away. Willow! Here is Titania. Did we have enough? Oh, we did. We have got a monster backup for. Oh, look at that. Nice. That was a smart play. I wonder if that's what the jellyfish is in there for, too, to enable that Titania. So... The Spiritus. And, yeah, probably the Omega. Mm, the chaos maybe, but I think the Omega is the bigger threat. Keep it from doing the damage. Now we're gonna go to end phase. We're gonna take a point of damage. There's Argentiana. Wouldn't have been a bad card. You know, I almost. No, I was gonna say. You know, I, I almost would have rather gotten rid of the forward, because then we could either a play another one, or b. We've now got a little CP, but looking at the board state, he's already all in on this. He's all in on, hey, I need to knock you out now because he's not going to win the War of Attrition. However, I don't know how he gets over. He's not now because you dole froze his other ones. Jellyfish isn't swinging with Neo X Death, and there it is. Uh, you, we need five dark cards on the board, please. I'm going to just let Emperor Gestal come in, take out your only threat. He's going to have four cards in hand with nothing on board. And Omega is going to be slowly whittling him away. Attack with the Neo X death. Like, there's nothing he's going to be able to do to kill you. He can't get down two hasters off of four cards in hand. Unless he's running both Roche and... Roche and who? Alba, I guess. And granted, he has his deck list, so maybe he has those. And if he does, then then it's smart not to attack. But but if you're greedy and you attack, you set up lethal for that following turn. There's the jellyfish. That is a way to give someone haste. Glassy Labalus. Okay, so we're going to kill the Spiritus. And then probably freeze the Omega. 
would be my guess. Just slow this as much as we can, but I mean, we're still just gonna we're just we're just delaying the inevitable at this point. I just don't see how you possibly come back against a Neo X Death and an Omega with only one card in hand and nothing on your board. You just don't have the resources to deal with it. And like, yeah, he's keeping that Omega from attacking, which is nice, but it also is like, okay, but I'm still slowly killing you. And not only am I killing you through damage, I'm killing you on the board. Dude, Omega and Neo X Death, what a, what, a br <laughs> what a terrible combination of cards to be against. You're dying through damage and you're dying through board state. But again, if we hadn't done such an aggressive opening, if we had waited, if we'd played the backups out, maybe we play off a little more. Now we get more value out of them. Now we have backups so that the, when the Neo comes down, we can deal with it more. Another thing he could have done based on what he is save that stern trigger. I didn't really feel like that stern trigger was necessary to give those two 4K brave. Or no, was that last game? Am I getting my games mixed up? Because I feel like the Stern didn't actually... Yeah, there's nothing removed. The Stern didn't even do anything this game. It, it came down, it threatened the 4K Brave, and then it just disappeared. <laughs> it got swallowed up by the Void. I mean, Willow, hey, hey man. Uh, I, I'm, I would love to see a Miracle come back. I just don't see how it's possible against those two cards with nothing on the board. Yeah, he's just going to have to pass take damage can't keep the x-death down any longer heidegger that would have been a bad one to have would have been expensive but at least it would have gotten the neo x-death off the board tell you what man this omega card and i've had a couple of friends play it it's just it, it, in the right situation it's it's brutal there's just not much you can do about it you definitely want a deck with heavy removal to be able to deal with it or anything with strong enough summons that'll just kill it on their turn when it's vulnerable. And there it is. Omega attacks puts us to four. Is he ever going to attack with this Neo X death? Or he's just going to be patient. I mean, at this point, he's waited long enough. He doesn't have a reason to. He can just be patient, sit on it. The only way I see you getting out of this... Steve, you're going to go to damage six at the end of your turn unless you kill this Omega is like Bahamut Zero, but even that's reaching, like that's gonna require your whole hand. So like, even if you, you stop the forward, okay, how do you finish the game off? You don't. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> We're gonna turn one of these four dark cards into dark. Why didn't he attack with Neo X Death? He could have ended the game this turn. I mean, I don't think it's gonna matter, but if he attacked with Neo next death, he'd put him to six. Or no, he's only on four. Okay, sorry. I got the damage mixed up. So yeah, I wouldn't have killed him. Oh, so now we're just dealing damage on every turn. Necron and Omega. Boom. There's... Okay, well now this is this is death because... Uh, Shantoto, anyone? Like, I don't know how else you answer this. And you're playing Ice Lightning, so I don't think that's going to happen. Do you have any way to get in one last point of damage? Brutal, man. Look at all that. Yeah, Neo X does that. that. Now, this right here, this is probably what Alex was waiting for. This is the combo. <laughs> Omega, Neo X death, Necron. You take a damage on my turn. You take a damage on your turn. You lose a forward. Yeah, at the end of every, at the end of your turn, go ahead and take a damage and lose a character from your board. And at the end of my turn, I'll do you a point of damage. All we're missing here, folks, is Sophie. We need to find a way to get Sophie on top of this. Okay, well, you know, best way to fight a dark forward is your own dark forward. How much ammo do we have for this? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If we can get two more in there, which is impossible given our hand state. So we have two stern triggers. I don't see how that matters. We can shoot the Necron twice. Can't kill the Omega. Can shoot the Neo X death twice. I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. Because the other thing is, like, his only real, like, out would be 
baiting him into attacking into him and then using the 4k buff to beat him in battle but there's no way a jellyfish a jellyfish legit has to just pass his turn he's gonna take he's gonna go to six damage at the end of this turn and then he'll pass his turn and necron will finish him off so so i guess that's all you can do yeah, I, I guess if you're technically still trying to play to survive, you stern Leonis the Necron twice on his turn. And we've got zero. Yeah, we can't even play either of these cards. You could stern... Well, I mean, it doesn't... Because if you stern Leonis it twice, then he can just swing over you and just kill you that way. So, God, look at, and look at Jellyfish's hand just pure dark cards well that is going to do it and the mono dark necron deck manages to hold out three very different games good good series played by both these gentlemen had some aggro but we also had some patience and some control and you know willows went all in on that last game on that opening hand and and for the first two or three turns it looked like it might actually carry him but that neo x death was just such a stabilizer and then held it together. So well played by both gentlemen. Folks, thanks for watching. We will see you next time for more awesome League of Light casting action. And we'll see you then. Should I play the football theme to take us out? Da-da-dun, da-da-dun. Bum, bum. I will see you next time. Bum, bum.